All right, we're back to my ranking Disney anime films, beginning with part four. This was the phase after the Disney Renaissance ended. This phase is called the Second Dark Age because some of the Disney films had financial issues and even critical reception issues. Now, since it's my list, I am ready to rank these ones. So let's begin with the Second Dark Age. Fantasia 2000, a follow-up to Fantasia, which, yeah, I didn't watch it as a kid, so I watched it on Disney Plus years ago. Did I like it? Yes. Is it as good as the first Fantasia movie? No, not even by a long shot. But there are some good segments in there. Once in a while, it's cute, but it's nowhere as great as some of the other segments. Besides that, there's another criticism in the movie, and that is the celebrity appearances. They are painful. Don't get me wrong, I love celebrities, but they are so awkward to see when they're on camera. So yeah, the celebrity appearances does bother me, and that's the only criticism besides some of the okay segments. All in all, I still think it's good. I'm putting it in the good category. Dinosaur. Now, I did watch this movie as a kid, but it's been over 20 years since I last saw it. So after watching it recently, it's not good. I will admit, I was hyped for this movie for the trailer that had the beginning for five minutes. I did have the VHS back then, but that was one of the films I watched the least. Besides the animation, which does look pretty, the story and characters were not good at all. Yeah, this movie had the least impact on me as a kid, and it is one of the Disney films I watched the least, besides some of the not good ones. There could be a chance I'll try to watch it again, but I think one sit through is enough. I'm placing it in the mediocre category. The Emperor's New Groove, a better movie than the last one. I watched it a few times as a kid, and yeah, it's pretty good, and it still holds up after watching it years later. Yeah, it's a buddy road trip movie with Cusco and Pacha, and Cusco transforming into a llama, but for what they are, it's fine. But let's get to the good stuff in the movie. The comedy is great, the animation is great, of course, and even the two villains, Yzma and Kronk, they own the movie perfectly. Again, I don't hate Cusco and Pacha, but the two villains stole it. That's Patrick Warburton voicing Kronk and Eartha Kitt voicing Yzma. Plus, they are funny, though Kronk is more hilarious than Yzma. But hey, they are funny. Still, this is one of the good Disney movies during the era, which means I'm placing it in the good category, though it won't top one of them coming up on this list. Atlantis The Lost Empire. This movie was a different take in the animation films list for Disney. It's like if this movie crossed with Indiana Jones and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Besides the comparison, I should talk about this movie. This movie I did watch more than Dinosaur, that's for sure, which I did like it. And as of now, I liked it not as much as a kid, but it's fine. Okay, before I place this movie in the category, I'll talk about what I like and don't like. The only thing I don't like is the villain. Yeah, besides Tarzan, this started the whole surprise villain that Disney would do later on. So yeah, I don't like the surprise villain in the movie. Besides that, there are some good things in the movie. The culture and the people are cool. The animation is really good, particularly this scene where Kida lifts. That was really cool. Even the side characters where Milo meets, I really liked. All in all, Atlantis is a pretty good movie, despite the main issue. I do feel bad for this movie since it didn't do well at the box office and getting mixed by critics. I mean, I can't place it at the bottom, so I'll place it right in the same level as Emperor's New Groove, but lower. Lilo and Stitch. Out of all the films on this list, this one stands out the most. I didn't remember liking as a kid, watching it since this was close to an E.T. movie. Now that I'm older, I like it a bit more. I should talk about Lilo and Nani. I mean, yeah, they did have good relationship, but I thought Lilo and her new friend Stitch had more relationship. After all, it is the title of the movie. But I can understand Lilo and Nani stand out because 
Nani is her sister and she's trying to be a parent to take care of her sister since they don't have parents. This is the kind of situation I really liked in this movie when I got older. Does that mean Leela and Nani are my favorite relationships in the movie? No, but it's close. Leela and Stitch have a great bond. Actually, I take it back. Lilo is great. For a character that Disney tried to do and they did a really good job making Lilo a great kid character, Stitch is cute. I didn't find him scary or uncomfortable. He was a cute creature. The aliens, Jumba and Pligly, are fine. They didn't ruin the whole film. Some of the alien stuff is fine. The animation is actually good, though not as the same level as Atlantis. The watercolor background was actually pretty rare and a nice comeback for Disney. And I did like they used Hawaii in the movie. All in all, this movie is a pretty good one and definitely the best one that came out during the 2000s. And while it's not in my top 10 favorites, I'm going to place it on the good category, but way higher than you would expect. Treasure Planet, a movie that has a futuristic vibe and it's Treasure Island. Instead, it's Treasure Planet. So yeah, let's get to some highlights. The characters are pretty good, and even the relationship between the characters is great. As for the not good ones, the setting. Yeah, the movie takes place in the future, which that's fine, but it could go all out. But yeah, that is distracting. I didn't mind Hawkins flying on his parasailing thing. So yeah, the setting is the major problem with the movie. I guess they did want a different take on the movie. But for what it is, the movie is fine. I didn't remember liking it as a kid. And yeah, I like it fine as an adult. Like Atlantis, it didn't do well at the box office, which yeah, it could have been great for any audience out there. Besides that, I like it fine. I'm placing it in good, but lower than Atlantis, despite the setting. Brother Bear. Alright, let's get to this one. I didn't see this movie when it came out that year. I mean, come on. Finding Nemo came out the same exact year. I wanted to see that one instead of Brother Bear. A couple years later, I finally watched it, and I didn't like it. Now I watched after 17 years, I still don't like it. However, I will give the film credit for the beginning. He had the myth and the culture and even the people. Something that Pocahontas almost tried. So yeah, I did like that. And even the ending with a good setup. However, by the time when the main character turned into a bear, I lost interest. The songs were not good. Yeah, thank you Phil Collins for ruining the songs. I thought the songs from Tarzan were better. Also, Coda the bear was also annoying. So yeah, the middle part where the main is a bear suck. And yeah, it's definitely one of the lower Disney anime films. The only parts I liked were the beginning and the ending. But other than that, it won't save it. I'm placing the movie in the mediocre category. If it didn't have good stuff, it would have placed it as bad. Home on the Range. <sighs> This is the worst Disney anime movie I've watched. Before I place it, let's get to my memory with the movie. Like Brother Bear, I didn't watch it when it came out until I watched it in 2005. I thought it was alright when I first watched it. The more I look back at it, the more I dislike it. Now, it doesn't mean that this movie is in my top 10 worst movies I've watched. No, I've seen worse. Home on the Range is the worst by Disney. I don't know if anyone had memories watching this movie. Anyways, what's wrong with Home on the Range? First thing is the tone of the movie. And I'm going to sound crazy, but Home on the Range just aims for kids. And I mean little kid standards. That's right. This movie is not for adults. The humor, the writing, the characters, and even the animation style. And I can understand why Disney can hit for both the kids and the adults. Here, no, it's mainly for little kids. Second, is the way it's all bouncy and smiley and colorful it is. Ugh. So, yeah, I don't like this movie. There's not much else to say other than it's bad. I'm placing it in the bad category. First one on the list for Disney. Chicken Little. Well, Home on the Range is the worst on my list. 
Chicken Little is another mess for a Disney movie. While it is the first 3D movie by Disney itself and not Pixar, this movie has a lot of misses than hits. The main lead and the side characters are okay, but the town people and Cluck's father are unlikable. The premise is weird, and yeah, it's based off the fable, but there are a lot of confusing jokes and lacking focus. It's not really engaging. It did have good intentions, but it didn't try. While I did watch it as a kid, I wasn't a fan of it since I watched it for the first time. And yeah, I still don't like it now that I'm older. I'm going to place it in the bad category, but above Home on the Range since it's not quite close. Meet the Robinsons. Like the other three where I did watch them, Meet the Robinsons, I didn't watch it when it came out. And I didn't buy it on DVD later on because I was getting older. Yeah, Pixar was on fire during that year with Red Tui. Meet the Robinsons, I had to skip. So after watching on Disney Plus years ago, how was it? Yeah, it's eh. Like Chicken Little, it has so many problems. Way too many jokes and too many characters that don't have a lot of focus. I will admit, the movie did have a simple message. That's the only highlight in the movie. I won't give it away, but there's a message at the end of the movie with a quote. So yeah, I guess you could say that I'm happy I didn't watch it back when I was close of turning to a teenager. Still, I think one time is good enough. I'll place it in the mediocre category, but lower than Brother Bear. Bolt. Now this one was a pretty good one. Yes, I didn't watch it when it came out because I was in that phase of not watching family films, but man, I should have watched it. The opening is like freaking cute. But it's not just that, it has enjoyable story and characters and action packed animation. The voice acting is pretty good. John Travolta voices Bolt and that's a pretty good casting. He's very likable and energized. And Miley Cyrus voices Penny, which that's fine to pick her. The only issue is the comedy, which it would have been nice to give it a few more laughs, but maybe they couldn't. Still, I do describe Bolt as a cute movie, and yeah, it is good. So that means Bolt belongs in the good category, but on this spot. So yeah, that is all for part 4 of the Disney anime films ranking, and I'm down to the last part, and I can't wait for the last one to be finished. I will see you guys in the last Disney ranking video.